I'm going to just get straight to the point. I'm going to go directly to the point. April is going to be one of the craziest months for cryptocurrency, specifically Ethereum and Cardano. Two things happening towards the end of this month. We need to pay attention. I'm saying this for a reason. It's pretty important. Keep watching. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Alex back with another cryptocurrency video and this is one of the most important questions that need to be answered. Can Cardano pass Ethereum? Now the reason I say this is because you guys know I have a macro portfolio structure. So what I usually do is I hold the top five altcoins. I hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, maybe some Binance chain. That's the vast majority of my top altcoins, right? The ones with the biggest market cap with the lowest risk. Now understand that Ethereum is the biggest out of those, okay? Ethereum and Bitcoin, I would say right now, it's mostly Ethereum because I've been allocating a lot out of Bitcoin, but we have to really pay attention because should it be Cardano? Should Cardano be the biggest holding in my portfolio, right? Do they actually have a chance to pass Ethereum and take over at the number two spot in core market cap. Now, I will say, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's, out, that's never gonna happen. Right, the network effects of Ethereum. It's never gonna happen. If we go to CoinGecko, or let's go to CoinMarketCap, because they have more history. If we go to CoinMarketCap.com, you can just simply pop open, for example, cryptocurrencies uh, right here, market cap. I'm gonna show you something that might blow your mind. Bitcoin and Ethereum, like, look, right here, XRP passed Ethereum for a very short period of time. So it's happened before, I will not rule it out, there's been major upgrades on Cardano that are extremely exciting. They're, they're jumping into NFT smart contracts, right? They're considered the most decentralized cryptocurrency on planet Earth, and they're upgrading at a rapid rate, guys. It, it, you, it's a threat. You need to pay attention to this. Obviously, network effects are a big thing, but if Ethereum can't solve the transaction speed issue or the fee issue, right? I don't, I don't, I'm just gonna be honest. There, there's a, there's a chance there could be a flippening, right? This, you know, Cardano can be the smart contract platform of choice, right? It can, they're on Coinbase now. We've talked about this for a very long time. I just need to keep up to date with it, but there's some interesting news happening right now. We'll jump into it. So the first thing I wanna show you guys, let me just read this. Last question before I go in the shower. Can anyone make a real bull case for ADA? Does anyone build on it? Why is the market cap so high? Should it be a funding asset? It's one of the few cryptocurrencies I haven't traded in my life. Well, obviously, he doesn't understand that things in the background are happening at a rapid rate. They're upgrading. They just became one of the most decentralized cryptocurrencies. 100% um, of the community runs nodes. 100% of the community, that's insane. So, yes, I, you know, up until this point, I would say that vast majority of, you know, Cardano, Polkadot is in the same category. And Binance Chain, not so much because they actually have a product. It's been speculation. But the, the point here is that we all in the future really think and really know that they're going to be upgrading to smart contract capabilities and be doing things that Ethereum's doing in a more decentralized way than Binance Chain and a faster and cheaper transaction speeds than Ethereum. So it's solving that problem. It's, it's jumping in there. Now, if, if they're going to pull it off, Charles gave a timeline, which we'll be watching, which is going to be towards the end of April, potentially, where they're actually going to have the test net for smart contract capabilities. It just happens to be at the same time, Berlin, which is an Ethereum upgrade that's supposed to help with transaction costs, is happening around the same time. We'll go over it, of course, but it's crazy that how this lines up. Uh, you should be paying attention to this news. If you guys don't know what's going on, I'll, I'll break it down for you. Very simple. But really quickly, if you look at ADA's price, because that's probably why you guys are watching this video against Bitcoin, you'd have been way better off holding ADA, uh, way better off, guys. The goal here, you know, of course, is to make money in crypto, but you want to outcompete Bitcoin. You'd have been 535 percent better in the last 56 days. Or I'm sorry, that's to the all time high. Excuse me. You would have been. 285% better in the last 92 days, in the last three months, if you would have held Cardano versus Bitcoin. Now you guys know why I have a lot of Ethereum, Polkadot, and Cardano, because they just outcompete Bitcoin consistently. It's relatively easy, right? The USD price, it's looking pretty good, to be honest with you guys. This is an ascending triangle, right? Which is extremely bullish. This is supposed to be a continuation pattern to the upside. You can see it's kind of following this support line right here. Even if we just go to kind of the top, right? The all-time high or a recent all-time high that's a 20 percent jump so again the question i want to revisit like should i allocate all of my ethereum to cardano right that's a question we all need to know because is there more upside potential e ethereum right now is, is about to hit its all-time high cardano still has 20 percent to get there and both of them are having major upgrades this month 
and April is supposed to be historically one of the best months for all coins. I mean, I don't know. The top 100 all coins versus BTC just broke out of a four year trend or three year trend. So, yes, we need to be looking at this in great detail because this is a lot of money in our portfolio. 20 percent. I mean, especially if, if you have the right macro portfolio structure, you'll have larger percentages in these top coins if you do it right. I mean, if you're if you're investing your whole entire portfolio into altcoin 1643 i mean i can't help you but you know when it comes to specifically you know having good risk management the vast majority of your money should be in ethereum and some of these top altcoins you know it is a big question it's a small you know jump 20 percent, but it is a big question that's going to make us a lot of money now if you guys haven't seen what's going on as of yesterday cardano basically had you know they, they're claiming to become one of the most decentralized blockchains on planet earth fully decentralized with 100 percent of the blocks minted by our staking pool operator community, 100% community owned. This is great. Can't say the same thing about Binance Chain for sure. And they've been working on this for a long time. So I'm happy to see that they actually reached their goal and they've been executing you know, on their goals, guys. Their roadmap, they've been executing on it. So if they're saying in the future they're having smart contract capabilities and the test net's gonna launch at the end of April, you need to be paying attention, right? So. If you come over here, you can see that it busted through 400K different delegators. People are, are allocating more money to staking on Cardano. It's great. Let's hear it from the man himself. Let's hear it from the man himself. We'll just watch a little bit of this and then we'll continue the video. Hi, everyone. This is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today is March 31st. It is a special day. It's a special epoch. We have now entered the full Ouroboros Prouse era of Shelley. We were in the hybrid era. We were running both OBFT and we were running Prouse. And epic by epic, you guys saw the system get gradually more decentralized. And now 100% of all block production is done by stake pools run by you, the community. It's an amazing accomplishment. It's an amazing feat. The beginnings of Ouroboros were in 2015 and 2016, uh, and it was really a long arc research agenda that was trying to determine the perfect engine for a cryptocurrency, for a blockchain. Uh, and a lot of thought went into it. We looked at proof of work. We looked at all the proof of stakes that had been brought to market from what happened with PeerCoin, and we looked at NXT. Uh, there were certainly a huge amount of open questions. And the Ouroboros agenda, while it took several years, one of the hardest parts in practice of getting these protocols out there uh, is getting the right distribution, is getting the right source of randomness, is getting the right community, and assuming that thousands of technical operators will just show up and run the system. Uh, that's an enormous assumption, and very few people would feel super comfortable five years ago, six years ago, uh, thinking that you could get there and it would be seamless and easy. And what's happened since July of last year has been absolutely astounding. And this is a great moment and achievement for each and every one of you, the stakeful pioneers, those who participated in the incentivized test net, the people who built businesses and advertised those businesses, small and large, uh, the people who delegated over 70 plus percent of all of the ADA in circulation is delegated at the moment to different pool operators. Nice. And every day, blocks are made. There's 120 hours in an epic, and uh, it's. Long story short, you guys can go watch it for yourself. I'm not going to waste your time. But essentially, you know, this guy has been working on this for a very long time, finally achieved the decentralization they're looking for. I like the fact that they're not willing to compromise uh, just to get the product done. They want true, fully decentralized, you know, blockchain. And, and, and I can commend them for that because only one right now that's really working is Ethereum. Uh, you know, so they're, they're trying to solve it on all areas. They're trying to solve pretty much everything. Keep the security decentralization, keep it community driven with smart contract, low uh, transaction costs and fast speeds. Right. So it's great. Hold on. Let me take these headphones off. Go watch the full video for yourself. For, uh, if you want to get more on it, it's basically him just restating the same thing over and over again, explaining the importance of decentralization. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So you can see that their uh, wallet as well on March 30th. 
basically bring support for native tokens, making it a multi-asset wallet with Cardano. Just kind of back from before, the Graph blockchain announces acquisition of Cardano for proof of stake mining. So more people are becoming, you know, more acceptant of Cardano. Like even like the graph is big. The fact that they're coming out with an announcement, it's one of the biggest announcements in Cardano that recently happened. Also, you can see the NFT, it's crazy, but they're already minting NFTs. Thing NFTs are already happening. And you can see that one of these tweets just sold for $23,000. Look, $23,000 on the Ethereum blockchain. Somebody sold this NFT. Basically, uh, Charles Hoskinson is, is calling out MetaMask for uh, pushing him to support. It's interesting. It's so funny. It's interesting that things can even sell like that. It's crazy. But, you know, you could obviously see there's a lot of hype. Cardano is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest coins on uh, in cryptocurrency. And people are willing to pay a lot of money. And there's a lot of value in Cardano as well as Charles, you know, him himself, man. He was a part of the original Ethereum developers. He knows what he's talking about, right? So definitely some interesting stuff there. They have full NFT platform. This is one of the examples, spacebuds.io. You could essentially purchase these nfts with cardano so again like i said more proof that they're coming out with actual smart contract capability this is you know it's crazy how much development they came from from where i saw them you know back in the day pure speculation you know height of 2017 bull run uh you know it's crazy how far we've come and things are rolling out and just guys just pat yourself on the back if you've been in cryptocurrency for a long time things are happening now we have real competition against ethereum just another kind of a tweet here, uh, 591 assets minted on Cardano. Here's the actual website. People are minting these assets, I believe mostly an NFT format. So yeah, a lot of developments happening. Pay attention. Now, this is probably the news you've been all waiting for. They actually had, and this is not new. This is March 25th. I just want to make you guys aware of it. We'll watch the video. We're going to watch this one completely, but basically they're rolling out Alonzo, which is going to be like a test net for smart contract capabilities and he announced the official he launch date here let's go over it it's now being systematically integrated into cardano itself and let's talk about that so this is a roadmap of the next few months of what we're doing and why we're doing it so we had to clear shelly and get ourselves on a new code base and then we told everybody that gogan would be a series of hfc events and the first one was last year and that HFC event was about bringing metadata and some structural improvements uh, to basically get us set up to then bring in multi-asset, which was Mary in March. And now we are uh, heading towards what's called the Alonzo phase. And so what Alonzo does is it takes this foundation, extended UTXO, which is partially already in the code base, and adds it all in and then puts this beautiful Plutus platform on top of Cardano. Okay. And here's kind of a timeline of how that works. So first off, it has to be integrated into the ledger and node code. That's the heart of Cardano. Then the wallet sits on top of it, then Daedalus. Okay. So what's occurring right now, all throughout March and all throughout April, is that integration into the node to get a CLI. Now, as that integration is happening, sprint by sprint, partners are being brought in. Then after that happens, we'll be able to, at the end of April, early May, to launch an Alonzo testnet, which means for the first time ever publicly, people will be able to uh, write smart contracts and deploy them on Cardano and to see something that started as a dream slowly come together and turn into something like this. Now it's just a testnet, it's a private testnet, but just off the speculation and hype can be something crazy like i said guys april everybody's trying to capitalize on uh april uh for sure there's a lot of news coming out we'll go over it but this is also just to give you guys a heads up one of the DeFi protocols that is set to launch on cardano when they come out with this test net so it's interesting if you want to keep that on your research list definitely put that on your research list and then we have orion coming out with you know they're integrating into cardano blockchain they're going to be the first liquidity aggregator they're getting the liquidity now so guys pay attention. We're definitely seeing a lot of uh, activity happening over here on Cardano. This is why I'm making this video in the first place. I need to stay up to date and make sure that, you know, I allocate my funds accordingly. And, you know, the, it's the biggest position. So I'm spending a lot of time and energy on this. Now, can it pass Ethereum in April? Well, let's look at what Ethereum's doing. If we look at Ethereum, they basically have Berlin coming up, right? So Berlin's basically an upgrade. They got a couple of EIPs in there. 
that they're going to be switching around now obviously everybody knows of eip 1559 there it's this is not exactly what's happening but let me just really quickly go over some news obviously mark Bull, uh, cuban is bullish that just came out i just want to get this out of the way it just came out like literally today he's talking about he bought ethereum early he says the closest thing to an actual currency yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. you know he's not uh, it's interesting to know that he's now like a pro cryptocurrency guy one thing take take in consideration before we go over the berlin upgrade i've talked about this already i talked about the berlin upgrade we'll go over it a little bit more coinbase direct listing set for april 14th but for some reason the exact date of the berlin upgrade is april 14th as well it's kind of interesting it's kind of it's kind of lining up uh you tell me uh, i mean it's not a coincidence right they're gonna be launching on april 14th so I don't know, man. I don't know. Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. That's all I got to say. What changes are included in the burn upgrade? They're basically going to have a modified gas cost. Essentially, this proposal introduces a new transaction type. Oh, this is the... I'm sorry. This is EIP 2718. Uh, new transaction type to envelope and enable easier support for multiple transaction types. Um, this right here, they're basically just going to accurately uh, calculate gas costs. Uh, it's just a better way to calculate gas costs. We went over this in my course a little bit. The rationale for raising these gas costs is mitigating large, uh, largest remaining DOS attack vectors. So they're increasing security of Ethereum. EIP 2930. Uh, this will basically add a transaction type that contains access list. Guys, uh, look into it for yourself. Essentially, what they're doing is they're upgrading Ethereum around the same time Coinbase is launching. Around the same time Cardano is testnet for smart contracts. I, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's very interesting to understand. Now, to answer the question, again, this is not, to me, compelling evidence that, you know, it's going to pass Ethereum. But I will say, you know, we might actually make a lot of money in comparison to Ethereum. I, I will say that. That's something that I can confidently say we might actually do a lot better in ADA versus let's look at a chart that I think might be interesting. If we look at Cardano versus Tether, let's kind of pull this up. It doesn't allow me to do it unless I pop into the actual chart. We look at USDT, like we talked about, there's a 20% jump. If we just kind of compare this, I believe we could do this to, for example, Ethereum Tether uh, versus USDT. We can look at the difference, right? You know, at least for the past couple of days, We've been, this is Cardano basically versus Ethereum versus USDT. So essentially you can see that you would have been better off holding Cardano up until this point. You would have been since January, since the beginning of the year, if you held Cardano, you'd be 143% better, right? So they've already been out competing Ethereum. It's already happening, which is annoying. I wish I had just dumped all my money into Cardano. The question is, is it going to continue from a technical analysis perspective? I mean, this is obviously, as you can see here. It kind of, you can say it's definitely not an asymmetrical triangle, but you can definitely say this might, you can kind of, no, you can't, you can't cross it. It's not an asymmetrical triangle, but you could say it could be something close to, depending on where this comes to right here. And from a technical analysis perspective, no. So say that basically, uh, you know, Ethereum will outcompete Cardano. If you were to ask me, you know, just from my gut feeling of what's going on in cryptocurrency, I don't know. Uh, Ethereum has way too much. They just have way too many things going on. Pretty much all the big NFTs that I've ever sold for millions of dollars are on Ethereum. I know it might be compelling to think that there's going to be something that's going to come and sweep and beat Ethereum, but I'll just be completely honest with you guys. They have, even though they've gotten up to the point with smart contract, they have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of infrastructure. And the reason I say this is because if you look at the Binance chain, they went and just kind of paid people to, you know, move over uh, to uh, Binance. And that's probably what Cardano is going to do. And they still have a lot of infrastructural issues. There's not that much activity going on in the Binance chain. Now, of course, Binance chains, it's going to be a completely different situation because they're centralized and they have a, a, you know, a different type of, I guess you could say public viewing or like a public community, you know, it's different, right? So the way I look at it is I need something more fundamental. So I'm right now at this point, I'm not going to switch my Ethereum over to Cardano. I'm going to buy more Cardano though. Like I'm going to buy more, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say that the percentages of my portfolio are going to shift. I'm not, I'm not rebalancing my portfolio to have, you know, uh, Cardano as a number one holding, even though we do have more upside potential. But I will say, you know, Ethereum is testing all time highs. If it breaks through all time highs, can definitely see Ethereum probably skyrocketing to five thousand uh, dollars. The technical analysis is saying Ethereum. Personally, I think I know that this is not I know Berlin's not a crazy upgrade. It's not like an upgrade 
It's going to change everything. But it, you know, it's just moving them closer. They're, they're using that as news. Coinbase got this listing the exact same day. The public listing is going to be massive. It's going to be one of the biggest milestones and cryptocurrency ever with the Coinbase public listing. It's my gut feeling, maybe I'll make a follow-up video before April 14th. Leave a comment below. If, if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll definitely do an update video on what I'm thinking. Uh, but right now, it's still, to this day, it's not, it's not convincing me. The network effects are monumentally different. Like, yeah, it might be same in market cap, but the network effects of Ethereum are just, it's just, it's not, it's night and day. It's night and day. It's completely different. There's so much more money being made on Ethereum, so much more money being spent on Ethereum. The transaction activity is through the roof. Fundamentals on Ethereum are obviously not as strong when it comes to product base, but pretty much every other variable is we're maxing out on all levels. Like Mark Cuban said, it's the closest thing to an actual currency right now. And they're slowly and steadily upgrading and fixing ETH. And I think people are lazy and I don't think they're just going to migrate over to Cardano like that. The same way they didn't really migrate to Binance chain, right? That's just my personal opinion. And also just one more thing to add before I end this video. Remember, like everybody's coming from Ethereum to other protocols, right? It's not really, you know, vice versa. And, and it's not like they're leaving Ethereum. They're, they're actively developing on Ethereum. They're, they're, they're moving to other protocols for the hype just to get liquidity, just to get like some people to buy it, right? They'll come out with an announcement. Oh, we're going to connect to Cardano. Oh, we're going to connect to Binance chain. And then the price j jumps up. But I will say that most of their activities on Ethereum, because it is what it is. A lot of these NFTs, even if they're on the Binance chain, they're getting the liquidity from ERC20 tokens, guys. Pay attention. This is the settlement layer. But that's it for this video, guys. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.